PHL 17 presents In Focus, a look at the issues affecting the Philadelphia region. Now your host, Steve Highsmith. Tickets will soon go on sale for Phillies Festival, the annual benefit involving members of the Phillies baseball team mingling with fans at Citizens Bank Park. Proceeds benefiting the ALS Association of Greater Philadelphia, the Greater Philadelphia chapter. Good morning, I'm Steve Highsmith and welcome to In Focus. ALS, or amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, is a neuromuscular disease. It's a disease of the nerve cells in the brain and spinal cord which control voluntary muscle movement. Scientists don't know what causes most of the cases, but about five out of every 100,000 people will be diagnosed as having ALS. Among people who have been diagnosed over the years with ALS were actor David Niven, Chinese Communist Party leader Mao Zedong, and of course, New York Yankee Lou Gehrig. With me now are Tony Heil, Communications and Public Policy Manager of the ALS Association, Greater Philadelphia Chapter, and Karen Delaney Scheidleff, who lives with ALS and active in the chapter. Thank you both for being here. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you for having Thank us. You. Tony, what should people know in general after all of the publicity that's been generated over the years, particularly in the last few years, is there anything people need to know more than anything else, that first thing that comes to their mind about ALS? I think the urgency. Uh, with ALS, the uh, disease progresses rapidly with people, and it's so important for us to get the support for research and patient care so that people can get the things they need quickly. Uh, our chapter, we're very proud of the fact that we do so many different services, whether it's in-home care or clinics um, or ramping at people's homes or wheelchairs. And we need to make sure that people who are diagnosed can get those services as quickly as they need so that they don't need to wait. Karen, we talked to you a year ago mm -hmm. and you were reporting on your prior year and at that time you said to me that you had a good year. I did. <laughs> now the past year, what kind of year has that been? It's been a good year, great year actually. Um, you know, it's about spending time with the people that you love, your friends and your family, you know, my husband. So we've just really been taking advantage of every minute and trying to find as much joy in even the most mundane of things and just accepting what's going on. Um, and I think we're doing a very good job of it. And we've. My family has always been involved with the ALS Association, but we've really ramped things up, and it's it's nice to give back. Well, your mother had ALS, yes. correct? And your father has long been involved with the chapter. Yes. And then you were diagnosed a few years ago. That's correct. And you acted pretty quickly because you're a nurse by profession, correct? Yes. My diagnosis was a lot quicker than what most people would go through because it is a... Um, it has a genetic component to it also, and I'm related to an ALS specialist, so I did get a quick diagnosis, um, much nicer than what other people have to go through. And because we had been through this before in our family, I do feel like I had a, a step up on everybody as to what my needs are gonna be initially and down the road. From a reaction standpoint and a support standpoint, that plays into what Tony was saying about urgency, being able to recognize early what it is and then do what you can. Right. And now your family is very supportive. You have sisters who are very supportive. You guys vacation together? Yes, we, we just went to Dominican Republic. And um, so the sisters went, and then my husband came down. We made it a whole big trip. Um, and then I actually just went away with my girlfriends. We're celebrating our 40th birthdays. Wow. Um, and it is a celebration, just of time together and taking advantage of it. Like I said, just enjoying every minute, even if we're just sitting around talking. Mm -hmm. And Tony, is this typical of how you see responses once people get the diagnosis or do people respond in different ways? I think when you look at the different families, you see people reacting in, in mostly a positive way to do uh, like Karen's family. But Karen's family is one of the best in the world, really. Uh, I joked with her last year that I saw her more than I saw my mom for the first <laughs> half of the year. Uh, but you have people who make sure that they see people they haven't seen in a while. They have a good network of friends and family. Um, we have something called a care connection where people can really grow that and let people know because uh, like you said, people don't know a lot about ALS. So when you feel comfortable talking about it and bringing in your friends and family, that's a really good thing because it, it makes you feel better in a lot of different ways, not just physically. Well, it's a motor neuron disease and we hear different descriptions of that around the world. Stephen Hawking, the great physicist, mm -hmm. is in some circles said to have ALS and others to have ALS related disease or just motor neuron disease. How do you describe it in that, in that range of, of diseases that it's in? Well, we're still learning a lot about ALS and we're gonna continually learn more about it. Um, that's why we need to do more research and figure things out. People who have ALS go through different forms of it in terms of sometimes it uh, starts where they have trouble walking, sometimes it's their hand movements, uh, sometimes it's a ball bar form where it starts inside and you can't speak quickly. Uh, so there's all sorts of different kinds that move into there. 
And that's why we need to do more research and learn because maybe they're all connected in one way where one cure is going to be good for all those different people. Maybe it's different kinds of things. You knew, obviously, that you possibly could have this because of the genetic connection. And so what did you first notice? I noticed um, when I was walking my dogs that my footsteps were sounding differently. Again, I'm a nurse, so I think I was a little bit hypersensitive to mm -hmm. things. Um, and then my balance started to go a little bit too. I kind of sat on it for a bit to mm -hmm. make sense of it in my own head before I really approached uh, my doctor and saying anything to my family. I just really needed to settle it within myself, which I did. Um, it, but again, it's very your symptoms are very vague. If you mm -hmm. don't know what to look for, whereas I did, I was mm -hmm. watching for certain things, but other people don't. So you know, people might just notice that their stamina is worse, that their footsteps they're not walking as fast as they used to, or Maybe they're dragging their foot a little bit and thinking, oh, I'm not working out hard enough or I'm just getting older, so I'm tired. So it's very vague initially, which is why it's so hard to get diagnosed. One of the great things about this, though, is that people, as they become more aware of it, get involved and realize that urgency and want to do a lot. And there's an opportunity for people to do a lot coming up, and it's called Phillies Festival. And Phillies Festival tickets go on sale in just a few days. This is going to be the 24th annual. Now, the Phillies have been involved with ALS for about 30 years. But May 16th, 2013 is this year's 24th annual Phillies Festival. Of course, it takes place at Citizens Bank Park. And the tickets, Tony, go on sale in just a few days on the 12th, right? Yep. On April the 12th. 12th. And they will sell out. I mean, there's only a few thousand tickets that mm -hmm. they, they make available. But this is a great experience every year. What do you like about it? You know, my favorite thing about the Philadelphia Phillies is how sincere they are about it. Everyone there can't wait to not be affiliated with us because they want ALS to go away. Uh, the fans, the players, the, from the top down to the bottom, they uh, go all out for this day to make sure the, the fans are happy, the patients have a great time to come there, um, that everyone can do all the things they want to do. So it's a, a, an extremely positive event for everybody that comes of all ages. What's it like hanging out with a fanatic? <laughs> <laughs> He's not the best smelling fanatic, but um, <laughs> no, he's, he's great. He really gets the crowd growing, going and uh, just a, a lot of happiness. And like I, I think I said last year, it's a really uplifting event to be at because there's kids there and there's families and the super fans of the Phillies and the Phillies are awesome. Mm -hmm. You know, the, like Tony said, they can't wait to get involved. They're very gracious about everything. So it's, it gives a real sense of community. So is, nice. it, is it an education opportunity, too, for a lot of those fans there? I mean, they're coming there to see the players right. and, and to support, but they, they don't all know necessarily about ALS. Yeah, I mean, I, I've explained what ALS is a million times, probably. Um, yeah, I think it's nice if they get to see the patients, the people that are being affected by the money that's being raised mm -hmm. for the event, whether it's someone like me who's walking with a walker right now or someone that's in a wheelchair or somebody that can't speak. You know, they get to see that there's different levels to this disease and you know, whether someone has it for two years or someone has it for 20 years, the effect is the same on their life that, you know, increasingly gets more difficult to deal with just basic things that you do in your everyday life. Well, some people, and you just mentioned that, are able to have a longer prognosis right. of, of lifespan at, with this uh, illness than others. And in, in your own case, you've been involved with one type of drug therapy and a couple different trials going on? Right. So I did a trial. Um, through Isis Pharmaceuticals, which was a successful trial. Uh, it was a new kind of medication, new delivery of medication. They were able to prove um, that the amount they thought was going into the body was correct, and now they can really branch out with other diseases too, which is mm. very important. And I'm being screened for another trial in uh, New York City for a medication that's used for malaria that they found decreases the SOD1 levels in the spinal cord to see if it slows down the progression. So there's, it is fascinating. It's a drug that's already out there in the market. They just want to give it an increased dose to make sure that it's safe and tolerable. So it's exciting for me because I feel like I am fighting back. Mm -hmm. I might not benefit physically from any of the trials I'm doing, but well, you might. down right, I might <laughs> right. But down yeah. the road, somebody else is going to benefit mm -hmm. either in that they prove the medication helps or that it doesn't help. But it's taking this medication, seeing if it works, and if it doesn't work, then what about that medication did we think worked? and what else is like it. So you can really branch out. Every study has so much importance to it. And what they may find is that they can use it in combination with others and right. all of that. And, and now, there are a couple different ways of approaching this. One is obviously to approach the illness itself in trying to cure it or treat it. The other is to treat symptoms of it. Right. Um, how are we doing in treating some of those symptoms? 
Well, so far there's nothing. Uh, mm -hmm. There's Riley Tech, mm -hmm. um, which is a medication that I would probably think that the majority of ALS patients are on, and mm -hmm. it's more um, for diaphragm support. Mm -hmm. And um, there's, you know, you can treat twitching in the muscles, the fasciculations and things like that, but as far as slowing the progression down, there's nothing out there yet, which is why I'm so gung-ho about putting are, myself Are you there. able to exercise uh, to try to, does that help or does that not have any right. impact? When I was first diagnosed, I mean, I was running on the treadmill the morning and then I got diagnosed and mm -hmm. they said no more. Mm -hmm. um, so I was allowed to walk, but not to the point of exhaustion. So mm -hmm. I was allowed to walk maybe 20, 30 minutes at a slower pace. At this stage, I'm not stable enough to do anything like that. You mm -hmm. say you can't do any weight-bearing exercises. Mm -hmm. They don't want you stressing the muscles. They are doing a study about the effects of ALS um, when you're already diagnosed. Um, what, if you're exercising, what kind of effects does it have? Mm -hmm. um, but there's nothing so far that has proven one way mm -hmm. or the other. I think the, the general thought is the less stress to the muscle, the more preservation of your strength you're going to have. You are unique, in, in, or at least rare, in the sense that you not only are a person with ALS, but you also are a nurse. Mm -hmm. uh, what would you say to medical professionals, knowing those two schools that yeah. you have, that maybe someone who's in the med medical profession doesn't know or needs to know? I, well, I think there's, unfortunately, there's not a whole lot out there about ALS. And if you don't see an ALS specialist, I think it's a disease, disease that could be very easily overlooked, mm. which is hard because, like I said, it takes six months to a year for some people, if not longer, to get diagnosed. Mm. Um, and you can really push off the symptoms for quite a while. So I think it's very important just to really listen to what the patients are saying to you um, and to not ignore something that you might think is just a complaint of fatigue. Because okay. fatigue, for someone that's active, is a big deal. Mm -hmm. That's one of the great things about the ALS organization in the sense that you also provide sort of one-stop shopping for people mm -hmm. yeah. and to be able to see a lot of different people at one particular time so you know because that, that having oodles and oodles of appointments is one of the debilitating yeah. things in, in, in itself or even prevents people from doing what they need to do. I want to talk more about what services are provided in a moment coming up more on Living with ALS, what the association's up to, and of course the fabulous Phillies Festival ahead on In Focus on PHL 17. Stay tuned. We're back on In Focus. I'm Steve Highsmith. We're talking about ALS this morning and the importance of Phillies Festival with Mayor Tony Heil, Communications and Public Policy Manager of the ALS Association Greater Philadelphia Chapter, and Karen Delaney Shadaleff, who lives with ALS and is active in the chapter. Thanks again for being here. Thank you. Yeah, it's important to point out, I think, that in this particular illness, it doesn't affect the mind, right? That's correct. Yeah, so I mean, you're, you're everybody's intact. Everybody's able to function. Yeah, well, there are people that do have a dementia that's related with ALS. I don't. Mm -hmm. My husband would tell you that I do, but I don't. <laughs> um, but yes, the majority of patients, very intact minds. And there is a disconnect because you think you can still do things the way you used to do them, hmm. but you can't until you try. And so. is this the kind of illness that has good days and bad days? Or? Certainly, yeah. I mean, there's definitely days. If today I went from here to somewhere else and I had a very full day, tomorrow I would be dragging. Mm -hmm. You know, there, you do need a recuperation time. Uh, I do th feel like a lot of us suffer from an insomnia sometimes, mm. um, just with different things that might ache or cramping in the middle of the night. So, you know, there, there's definitely other things that impact the disease, but, you know, I always have a will to go, so <laughs> I try to pick it up and go. Well, now, being involved with trials, this may mean you're a little different from anyone else, perhaps, that has ALS, but do you have to see a doctors a lot? Are there a lot of appointments, or once you have these initial tests done, you know, you know, still right. every six months or something. Well, I see my, work? the ALS clinic that I go to and all the people that you see in the clinic, which is great, about every three months. And then for the trials, it's dependent on the trial, what they need to do as far as their regulations. So the trial I'm about to enter, uh, I do need to see them every three weeks, mm. which they're in New York City and I live in Upper Bucks. Um, so the commute is not bad for us. Um, and it's more because they want to check your blood, make sure that everything is safe, that your body's tolerating it. Um, do some spinal taps and things like that. So it depends on the actual 
uh, trial that you're participating in, some of them are not as intensive as far as how many visits you have. And I think this is it's referring to something I said earlier that's important that the ALS chapter does is it realizes all these different things that can be pulling on someone who's got this diagnosis and you try to streamline it for them. Mm -hmm. what, yeah. do you, what do you provide now? Uh, we have our multidisciplinary clinics. Uh, one is at Pennsylvania Hospital. We have one at Hershey Medical Center uh, up in Geisinger as well and the Lehigh Valley Health Network. Uh, they'll see a neurologist, they'll see a nurse, they'll see a dietitian, they'll see a social worker, they'll see a occupational therapist, a physical therapist, and they'll see an assistive technologist, maybe a speech pathologist. They'll That's see the up to 12 people in one day. Yeah. And that mm. helps them to make, like you said, make sure they don't have to go to all sorts of doctors over a period of months. But uh, then they'll be there, they go with a caregiver, a family caregiver, and so that person will learn all the things they need to know. and. One of the things that's great is sometimes certain terms or things sound very scary and the people who work at these clinics are terrific and they'll, they'll let them know that this particular thing isn't scary. This is easy to do or here's how you do it and they demonstrate all the things that they need to do and then there's a lot of follow-up that happens through our office to make sure that they have the services and the tools they need. Any significant illness has an impact not only on the person who has the illness but on family members that are around there as well. Mm -hmm. Are family members able to get any kind of support or advice from the ALS Association? No, oh, certainly. We have support groups. Um, we develop friendships as well. Um, we have uh, Nurturing the Nurturer Day. Uh, we have a holiday party. And so we make sure that those caregivers are brought in and we make sure that they uh, get the care they need. Also through our in-home care program and respite care, that means that those people are able to work and get the services they need. So if um, we provide up to 10 hours of in-home care through our Abrams in-home care program and that means that you know if Chuck his uh, wife needs to go out um, for the beginning of the day she can do that while someone else is taking care of the, his needs mm -hmm. and that's a lifesaver for both of them in that case. Now you have such an outstanding family maybe you didn't need to you know, press on those particular services, but have you used, used those services at all? Or you I haven't had to do the in-home because mm -hmm. I, I don't have, my needs aren't that great mm -hmm. right now, but when I had to stop driving, my family stepped up to the plate so I could continue to work mm -hmm. and driving me to and from work, my husband would take me in, my dad would pick me up, a sister would pick me up, mm -hmm. and we kind of looked at it as time to spend together one-on-one mm -hmm. -on -one mm -hmm. instead of a big family group meeting. It was actually very nice to be able to spend that time, so you kind of turn it to your advantage, but I mean, I've used the ALS Association when I had to file for disability because I have stopped working at this point. Because there's a lot to navigate that you just no, no one has ever had to deal with before. Um, and just, I call them for all kinds of things whenever I need help. And they call you. And they call me to check on me or send an email. It's, it is quite a community. I mean, I can't stress enough, which is why I feel like I'm giving back by doing more with the association, especially now that I'm not working. And that's, again, if, if folks just joined us, what's also wonderful about the Phillies' involvement with this for so many years, more than a generation now. And why don't you lift up that T-shirt there in just a few days. Tony, thanks for lifting that up. This is the Phillies' festival, and the tickets will go on sale on April 12th, and the festival is on May 16th this year. Uh, that particular T-shirt is from 2011, right? Mm -hmm. That was in June. They've had, and some years, I think last year was July. Yes. And this year it's going to be May 16th, but the tickets go on sale April 12th, and they're going to sell out pretty quickly, right? Don't they usually sell out like the, a few hours? The tickets go on sale at 9 a.m., so go to thephillies.com and get all the details. Um, they will sell out within a few hours. It's a great time. People love to come out. And this they get they can get autographs right i mean they, they can get autographs content. they can get pictures they can play games there's silent auctions uh they can you know they can get food it's a lot of things they can do that whole day so they're pretty busy when they go to the festival if you were running the als organization <laughs> would you do anything differently uh, i don't think so <laughs> i mean i've gotten more, yeah i've gotten more involved with the board too um and it's it's run very smoothly and there's people from all different avenues of life, whether it's business men and women, lawyers. So there's so much input from different areas. Mm -hmm. I do feel like there's such a great balance um, in both the Board of Overseers and the Board of Trustees. And just within the whole ALS chapter in itself, the people that work there are amazing. They are, like they, I feel like they sometimes fight harder than the rest of us do. Mm -hmm. They're so in tune with everything and care so much about us that it's really, like I said, it's a community, it's a big family. And it's a very much in the know family. And uh, Tony, you have a connection to this, your grandfather, correct? Yeah, my grandfather passed away from ALS in 2007. 
and like Karen was talking about with her family, you learn a lot about your family that way. And you know, I saw my dad in one light and didn't realize how caring and compassionate he was because I you know, just didn't see it as much. And he's always been a good person, but then you see all that family connection. And he went to see my grandfather six to seven days a week easily, and it, that that touched me more than the disease did. So, you know, you come here and that's the kind of compassion I see at the chapter from all levels, whether it's the people who answer the phones to the people on the board, everyone kind of sees this disease as making sure that no one is ever alone with it and that uh, we're all together to make sure we can end it. How do you, s you see this when you explain it to people, how it affects, you know, in the brain and the spinal cord and nerve cells and how it plays out? What do you tell people? What's the elevator speech? Uh, well, I tell them, you know, this is a disease that can progress rapidly and there's we don't know why it happens uh, but you know it, it can drastically change your quality of life within a matter of weeks much less months and years uh, but it's since my grandfather passed away in 2007 we have a lot of new hope because of uh, the new services we're able to provide with assistive technology ex for example and new research uh, so we need people's help because we've seen that things can get better um, but we're not there yet and it's such a devastating the disease that we need all the help we can to get there. And you do feel that there is this new hope you see all these changes? From what I saw from my grandfather and from what happened then, and that was only in 2007 mm -hmm. to what exists now, um, I would be happier if we were closer to a cure, but people with ALS often end up, if they have, they can lose their voice, and when he had a ALS, there was no such thing as an iPad. Now people can use it to speak. Uh, people have given speeches using their iPad, so that's a tremendous improvement in quality of life just since then. So, well, we'll have more on this, more on ALS in our community in a moment as we continue on in focus on PHL 17. Stay tuned. And In Focus continues on PHL 17 with Tony Heil of the ALS Association Greater Philadelphia Chapter and Karen Delaney Scheidleff who lives with ALS. So Tony, we were saying during the break there that your grandfather was a veteran. Yes. Veterans are being diagnosed at twice the rate? Yes, that's ALS. true. Do we have any idea why that is? We don't know exactly why. It could be because of the training they do. It could be because of the stresses, physical and otherwise. Uh, it could be because of the uh, drugs they have to take to get ready and physically fit. Uh, but it's considered a service-connected disease across all theaters and time frames of war, whether they were abroad or at home. Uh, we have a lot of veterans who are affiliated with our chapter. And the, um, because of that, the Department of Defense has a ALS research project that we go to Washington every year to make sure it continues to get funded because uh, we don't want anyone to have ALS, especially the people who are serving for us. Karen, you are a great person. Well, All right. thanks. <laughs> Do you, you must sit there every now and then, because I've known other people with different kinds of illnesses, and they've, they've very serious ones, and they've said, you know, why me? You know, that kind of stuff. How do you answer that question? Uh, I think I've stopped asking why me at this point. I, I didn't spend a lot of time doing that. Mm -hmm. um, I, I mean, honestly, I'd rather be me than somebody else. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the way I look at it. And like I said, I'm just trying to take each day as it comes. And I don't live with too many expectations. Therefore, I don't get disappointed. I just kind of take every moment for what it is. And, you know, we do our best to raise money, raise awareness, get the research going and just kind of revel in having people with you in your life that you love. And do you find that that kind of, you know, she's not trying to be a leader, but that kind of leadership is able to resonate with other people? Oh, certainly. When, when other patients and families see teams like Karen's at the uh, Walk to Defeat ALS, or they see other people who have stepped up, it makes them realize that they can do it too, because it's people who are at all levels of um, job experience and life that get really involved and you know people like Karen and her family and Larry and others are inspiring to everybody that gets involved with our chapter. And there are walks around the country but the Philadelphia walk is going to be in this November, November at Citizens Bank Park. And of course as we mentioned the Phillies Fest Festival takes place on May 16th yes. but the tickets will go on sale in a few days on April 12th mm -hmm. and you just go online and 
Get the tickets as you normally would. There's a phone number at phillies.com. It's 215-643-1000. Mm -hmm. Say that again, please. 215-643-1000. Um, but you can get more at phillies.com. What is your hope? What do, you, what do you hope that people do when they get more engaged with the ALS Association? Well, there's a lot of ways that people can get involved. They can be, they can donate. That's obviously the easiest and way to do, but they can volunteer. We have community ambassadors at events. We, can ha we uh, need advocates, whether it's in Washington or Harrisburg or Trenton or Dover, all over the place. Uh, so I think what's good to know when they come to our chapter is that there's so many ways that they can get involved. They don't have to do one thing. Uh, just getting involved in the Walk to Defeat ALS, for example, and being on a team is a great way to start and have lots of involvement with the chapter in many ways. Aaron, your spouse, your husband, yes. uh, has obviously done a lot of things right, I would think, uh, <laughs> over these last number <laughs> of years. <laughs> uh, what maybe has he done or said or thought <laughs> that you could recommend to any other spouse out there? Uh, he's a great sounding board for me. I mean, he's the one person. I mean, there's many people in my life, but I know that no matter where I am that day, I don't have to hide it from him. But we also both make sure that the other person feels okay. Like he always says, when I come home from work and you have a smile on your face, even if I had the worst day, I smile at you. Mm -hmm. And I feel the same way. I'm happy to see him. We take advantage of our time together. So, you know, we both feel very strongly about our families and our connections with our friends. So we just, you know, just take it like that. And he's supportive and there's really nothing more I can say. He's got a great example of my father. Um, so. Well, well thank you. Know. you. Thank and, you. And to oh. your entire family. We would like to make you an honorary member. Hopefully you'll come out and join us for the walk. This is our we'll team do. shirt, Delaney Strong. All right. So Count me in. We'll see you in November, <laughs> hopefully. We have that. <laughs> Very good. And that's in focus for this week. Put my t-shirt on now. Thank you for watching. I'm Steve Highsmith. Enjoy your weekend and have a great weekend.